Hello everyone, welcome to Retrograde Planets in Astrology. When you are born with a retrograde planet in your chart, it needs very special attention. I have great secrets for you to help you understand the special meaning of these planets. Indeed, I will go into detail for every one of the possible retrograde planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus and Mercury. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below and let's begin. So what exactly is retrogradation in astrology? Here's an illustration of what happens. It's actually not a real phenomena. No planet is actually going backwards. They just seem as though they are. Here we have the Sun, the Earth and Mars. So when the Earth gets to a parallel position with Mars, as you see just about now, Mars, as it is not going as fast around the Sun, appears to be going retrograde from the Earth's perspective, appears to be moving backwards. It's an optical illusion, but it's a very important phenomena in astrology. Most importantly, at the closest point together, parallel, Mars seems larger, more important than he ever does at any other time. And this is exactly why. A planet which is retrograde is completely different to a planet that is going direct. In Vedic astrology, a retrograde planet is known as Vakri. And I have distilled for you seven key principles that work when we are trying to judge retrograde planet in our chart. The first point you must always remember, everyone, is that a retrograde planet is very, very strong. Strong doesn't always mean good, though. Let me explain. In the Western system, for example, some of you may know, a retrograde planet is seen as being weak and internalized. It's not expressing itself as that normal planet should. But nothing could be more further from the truth. The planet is not weak, it's extra strong and powerful. In the Vedic system, we use the term Chestabala to describe the brightness of the retrograde planet. It is an internalized brightness in your consciousness. It's a strength inside you. So often you have to go through things again and again in relation to the characters of that planet or its position in your chart. But this trial and error rather than making you weak, makes you stronger and stronger. So eventually, a retrograde planet for many people becomes an actual factor of great success in their life. So where to begin with, there might be illusion, confusion, and a great deal of struggle in connection with that planet. Eventually, it can become the pinpoint, the actual cog in the wheel that takes you to your highest attainments in life. Secondly, a very important principle, a great secret from the Vedic system, coming from Sage Parashara. If any retrograde planet is exalted or debilitated, it will actually change state. It will act like the opposite sign. So, if you have Saturn in Libra, it will be exalted, obviously, but... If this Saturn in Libra is actually retrograde, it will give the result of Saturn in Aries, the opposite sign, debilitated Saturn. Conversely, if you have Saturn Aries in your chart but retrograde, it will give you the result of an exalted Saturn. And that goes for all the other planets, e.g. Venus in Virgo. If retrograde gives the same result as an exalted Venus in Pisces. But the planet has not changed house. It is just giving a different result. Now, some astrologers in the Vedic system actually say that any retrograde planet will give the result of the opposite sign. And sometimes I have found this to be absolutely true and it really works well. And other times it doesn't seem to work so well. So it's not an absolute rule and it's certainly not coming from Sage Parashara. So let's apply the definite rule, certainly. An exalted or debilitated planet, if retrograde, will certainly act out like the opposite sign. The third key factor, there are such intense karmas in the house occupied by any retrograde planet. This is very important to understand because that house is lit up with a spotlight in your lifetime. So circle the house where retrograde planet sits. 
the factors connected to that house, the meaning of that house, will become central to your life experience. It's all to do with understanding what a retrograde planet is actually doing. Retrograde means that it has gone back to do something that it didn't complete last time. So some very intense karmas are there that were not completed. It's just like when you've been shopping or something, you've left the shop and you've forgotten one item. What do you do? Normally, you will go back into that shop, rushing back in, in a very intense and focused state. You're there for one thing only. You're not distracted by anything else. You know what you want and you accomplish that mission. In the same way, a retrograde planet in your chart has a mission to accomplish in this lifetime and they will not be distracted by anything else until they have accomplished it. So how do you judge what this mission is in your life? Of course, you judge first of all by the house position. If the retrograde planet is in your first house, it's very much about how you project yourself onto the world, your level of confidence, your, your ability to make good decisions in life, maybe health factors too. If it's in your seventh house, it's all about your spousal relationship, relationships in general, and business factors. Also, you must look at the sign of the retrograde planet. Very important to show you what deeds you performed last life that have made this planet now be in a retrograde motion for you in this lifetime because you are obviously taking those deeds forward again to accomplish them in a different way, to actually do what you failed to do last time. Check the link below, I have a whole playlist on my channel explaining the karmas with every position of planet by sign. However, in judging intensity of karma, the different retrograde states are important. A retrograde planet can be in a different state. You have to check this in an ephemeris, actually. It's not going to be always obvious in your birth chart readout. When you check the ephemeris for your month of birth, you will see if that planet is going swiftly retrograde. That's the first state. If it is, that desire will be fulfilled in this lifetime because it's very intense and you will not be distracted. If the retrograde planet has slowed down just before becoming stationary, that desire is less intense. So it's not so much a focus for you in this life. It's important, but it's not so much a focus. Finally, there's another state, a very rare state, where the actual retrograde planet is virtually stationary now, but it's still got that are beside it in the ephemeris. It is still retrograde. That's a very, very strong retrograde planet. You will accomplish something very unique in regard to that planet in this lifetime. The fifth important point is a great secret. This is coming from the Pandit Sanjay Rath School of Astrology, and I have found this amazing for analyzing retrograde planet. This is the rule. When a natural malefic, which means Saturn or Mars, is retrograde but debilitated, so that would be Saturn in Aries and Mars in Cancer, but also in a quadrant or trine house, it's a great blessing to you. So look out for that. Saturn Aries, Mars in Cancer in 14710 or 59, those houses will be a great blessing no matter what difficulty comes to you through that graha, through that retrograde planet, there will be a great blessing attached. Another great secret from the Pandit Sanjay Rao School of Astrology. When the retrograde planet is also at Makarika, highest degree planet, this is the reason you took birth, to fulfill this particular desire. That planet needs great analysis and understanding indeed in all Vargas as well. So this at Makarika planet, because it is retrograde, contains some specific desire that you will move heaven and earth to actually fulfill. Finally, number seven, a very precise point that will definitely help you judge retrograde in your life. The houses ruled by any retrograde planet can be spoiled in some way. Now, this sounds pretty harsh, but let me explain it to you. 
So let's say you've got Saturn retrograde in your chart. Where is Capricorn? Where is Aquarius? What houses do they govern in your life? Those areas will be spoiled for some part of your life in terms of not going smoothly for you, having many hurdles for you. But over time, as you mature into that Saturn retrograde and you grow with it, you can also overcome hurdles in those houses. So having considered those important rules, everybody, let's look ahead at the individual retrograde planets in your chart. What karmas do they hold by their own karaka significance? And indeed, let's have a look at some example charts. What happens when you have Saturn retrograde in your chart? Saturn is the karaka for sorrow, delay, frustration, all sorts of inhibitions coming from past debt and past karma. This is the same if Saturn is direct or Saturn is retrograde. There's always going to be obstacles, hurdles and all sorts of restrictions wherever Saturn is in your chart. But when Saturn is also retrograde, it affects your consciousness in a really big way. The sufferings and frustrations in life are difficult to bear when you have Saturn retrograde. You become impatient, you push ahead. There's a huge desire to overcome obstacles that can get you into some difficult trouble I've seen. So Saturn retrograde definitely I've seen makes you push ahead against obstacles in life. There is a real impatience to get things done. But on the other hand, I've, I've also seen a low tolerance level for frustration. And so Saturn retrograde sometimes can actually make people detach from society. You actually move away from society because you do not feel appreciated. Sometimes that can happen. There can be even reclusive nature in extreme. But most people, it doesn't go that far. What you do have, though, is a mistrust inside of other people. And this mistrust makes relationships difficult. There can be a real fear of rejection. And what you tend to do is to reject other people first before you get rejected. So this sensitivity to other people is definitely going to cause you some real difficulty in life and it's going to upset relationships sometimes also. Overall though, most people with Saturn retrograde have enormous persistence against great obstacles in life. And in the end, Saturn will always reward persistence. So whenever they are knocked down, they get up again. They keep on trying. And this is why they can often be extremely successful in life. Let's have a look now at some Saturn retrograde positions in celebrity charts and apply the rules we've just discussed. Let's start with the chart of Marilyn Monroe, the famous actress and sex symbol who died of an overdose in her 30s, although it was under quite suspicious circumstances. Here's the thing. Saturn is the major retrograde planet so powerful in the fourth house of her chart in Libra. And it is also her Atma Karaka planet, therefore contains especially strong karmas that she came here to fulfill. Don't forget, by the rule, because it is exalted in Libra and retrograde, it will act as a debilitated planet in Aries. And of course, it is in the fourth house containing early life karmas. So very heavy karma zen coming then from past life, a situation that she has to face in this life that won't be easy. She was actually illegitimate and her mother had schizophrenia. She never knew who her biological father was. And her mother was admitted to a mental institution when she was a actual infant, I think very young indeed. And from that time, she was put into a children's home, after which she went from foster home to foster home. But she never found love and security. She was actually put into abusive situations. So a great deal of loneliness, misery and lack of consistent mother love were actually what characterised Marilyn Monroe's experience of childhood. But as always with Saturn retrograde, these difficult factors in her life propelled her ambition and gave her resilience so that in its aspect on the 10th house of career and status, she was able to find opportunities to bring herself out of this desperately difficult situation. The first thing that she did was actually to get married, to get away from these foster home situations. And we can see there that Saturn is the Lord of the seventh house connecting. But 
as per the rule. Houses which are connected to the retrograde planet, in this case, 7th and 8th house, Capricorn Aquarius, are in some way spoiled. So she had three marriages, but they were all unsuccessful. And the 8th house of trauma and secret factors, and of course, ultimately of her death, came to bear when she died in suspicious circumstances. And she was actually all alone in her home. Next, Madonna. Saturn is in Scorpio retrograde and also in the fourth house. This time, it's neither exalted nor debilitated. So we just read it for Scorpio. Scorpio Saturn always undergoes extraordinary transformation in life and being retrograde, extremely strong karmas. She also lost her mother in her early childhood. When she was five, her mother died and her mother had an extraordinary um, effect on her though having the same name actually as Madonna and Madonna really never overcame this loss in her life she has talked about it so many times but it spiked her ambition and her determination to succeed Saturn is the only planet aspecting her 10th house in her chart and is giving her extraordinary ambition and determination by this retrograde status. What are the houses ruled by Saturn? Because by the rule, they will be in some way harmed by Saturn's retrograde status. In Madonna's case, it's the sixth house and the seventh house. Sixth house, she is known to have a difficult, um, how can we say, relationship sometimes with people who work for her. Although that maybe have been overstated. One thing for sure though, Madonna has extraordinary obsession with her health, fitness, well-being and so Saturn is impacting there by its retrograde status and its third aspect actually on this house with extraordinary discipline which she shows. But most importantly the Kendra house Aquarius seventh house has been impacted. This is her relationship house. She has had two marriages, but she has not been able to sustain any of these marriages long term. David Bowie finally has sat in a Kendra as well, this time in the seventh house of relationships and business partnerships. His Saturn is in Cancer. Not a strong sign, but it's not debilitated or exalted. Retrograde conjunct to the moon. The seventh house is going to be implicated strongly. His relationships were troublesome for him. Finding intimacy was always difficult for David Bowie. He was known for being promiscuous with this three planets in his twelfth house with Mars, but he had difficulty getting close to people for long-term intimate relationships. Relationships. He had two marriages. His first wife in his 20s, Angie Bowie, was known to have been a marriage of convenience so that she could get citizenship. They were never really that close, although they were very public couple in many ways and she has spoken about that. He divorced her and then much, much later in life, he eventually settled down in his midlife with the famous model Iman and that seems to have been a more successful relationship. What are the houses ruled by Shani? First house and the second house from Capricorn and Aquarius. These will be in some way spoiled as per the rule of Saturn retrograde. So his health was definitely afflicted. David Bowie had delicate health really most of his life because he himself did not take very good care of it. And he was mostly known to be malnourished. This had long-term consequences. And his second house of food, of course, afflicted with that malnourishment, but also due to his substance abuse. Jupiter retrograde. Jupiter is karaka for opportunity in your life for guru, education, religion, children, spouse in a female chart and wealth. So in every one of these karaka factors, there will be some delay gaining those really good karmas. You make mistakes because you often miss opportunity. Sometimes Jupiter retrograde shows conflict past life in matters of religion. So you are very acutely aware of the importance of your religious path in this life. 
Jupiter retrograde often indicates some really deep karmas around gurus, religious belief systems, philosophical systems that caused you some distress past life. So you have come back to retrace your steps. This is why Jupiter retrograde finds it very hard to commit to one system of religious belief. You are you are always searching, always looking in other directions for the truth of life. But on the positive side, Jupiter retrograde will give you great knowledge and wisdom through this wandering factor through so many different philosophical systems that is ultimately beneficial for you. In terms of education, Jupiter shows broken education when retrograde that is rectified with great force and enthusiasm later in life where you can leave your education early but then complete it to a very high standard later. Women can also find that husband is unusual in some way, maybe from a different culture, from a whole different background, and there is some adjustment has to be made. Or there can be a deep relationship which is broken early on, only to pick up later a more successful relationship situation. Sometimes you may find in this regard that the early mate in a female chart, husband if you like, is left behind and then reclaimed even later in life in a completely different circumstance. Those sort of extremes can be seen. With Jupiter retrograde, Jupiter is Corica for children, so you can expect that your children are unique in some way, special in some aptitude or somewhat unusual. One of your children in that way. Finally, Jupiter is actually representing how we feel secure in life. Jupiter is associated with the element of space ether. So feeling uprooted, feeling unprotected, feeling left out in the cold in some way is very common with this Jupiter retrograde. That is why this great feeling of vulnerability turns Jupiter retrograde inwards towards the spiritual core and centre as your only true place of refuge. Let's look now at three example charts of Jupiter retrograde starting with George Harrison, the beetle who was known as the quiet beetle, the mystical beetle. The musician who was always interested in, first of all, transcendental meditation. And then after some time, he more or less became most attached to Srila Prabhupada from the Hare Krishna movement. You can see with this Jupiter in the seventh house that it is dominating the whole chart. It's his ruling planet. It's in Gemini and it's retrograde. So this is about finding spiritual fulfillment through many different areas. Gemini means in any case a fluctuating factor. So George Harrison certainly personifies the searching mystical nature of Jupiter retrograde, going far from his religion and philosophy of origin. Jupiter is obviously impacting strongly the seventh house of relationships. He had two marriages. First marriage to Patty Boyd, 1960s, ended in divorce. And of course, she famously had an affair with Eric Clapton, the musician. So some great misunderstandings there that she reported in her biography. But he finally found happiness with his second wife, which was some years later. The seventh house is also the house of the marketplace. So Jupiter really having a great impact on his success in marketplace with his songs and his music. Much of his music was spiritual in nature shown by this Jupiter. He had great success with a single called My Sweet Lord. And in fact, his Material World album, which was totally dedicated to spiritual factors, was hugely successful for him. Houses ruled by Jupiter as a retrograde planet will be weakened. The first house of health was impacted and the fourth house of home and happiness. Although Venus in Pisces here does help so much, he did have quite a good home life, a very beautiful manor house in which he lived for many, many years. But actually violence came into that home from this Mars rising in Sagittarius. In the last years of his life, there was a knife attack with, with an intruder into his home, linking 
these two charts. Of course, Mars having the fourth aspect on the house of home. Next up, the famous Hollywood legend Elizabeth Taylor, famed for her beauty, but also for her seven husbands and eight marriages because she married one of them, Richard Burton, twice. So, Jupiter, Karika in a female chart for husband in the eighth house of transformation, retrograde in Cancer, is definitely having impact here. Also, it's her ruling planet. So this is a very important placement for Elizabeth Taylor. But let's start with the basics. Jupiter retrograde always shows a spiritual quest. You may be surprised to learn that she definitely had a great interest in spirituality. She actually converted from Christianity to Judaism very early on. Now, although two of her husbands were Jewish, Elizabeth Taylor said clearly that she did not convert to Judaism because of them, but because of her own spiritual quest, and that she found comfort and security in the ancient religion. Very typical of this Jupiter retrograde, seeking security in spiritual quest. But she was not able to find that same security in her marriages. Now, obviously, we have to see D9 chart, ruler of the seventh house, combustor, the sun, so many other factors. But just this Jupiter as Karika for husband, retrograde and acting now in a debilitated state, we can see that it's going to be karmically difficult for her to find that satisfaction, but that she has to go through this endless transformation of so many marriages. Now, interestingly, it is her ruling planet and the lord of her fourth house that is retrograde here. So we're going to have an impact on her health by this first house. And indeed, she did suffer for long term chronic illness for most of her life. And the fourth house of happiness is also implicated. She was known for her long depressive illnesses as well. When Mars is retrograde in your chart, sometimes there are past life situations in warlike circumstances or danger which has scarred your consciousness in some way. And now there is a need for action, aggression. You become cautious after some time. Some action was performed that caused you to be in a very dangerous situation. And this is always at the back of your consciousness. Don't be afraid of this, though. Mars retrograde simply gives you this push-pull factor when you are trying to initiate new projects. You are always pulling back and looking at what you've done to make sure everything is okay. But at the same time, Mars can internalize so much anger and aggression so that you have to be very careful of this. You have to gain awareness of these issues in your life. Mars is the element of fire, so definitely the fire element is completely strong and dominant in your chart with this retrograde Mars. There can be exhaustion, almost burnout in your life in the area where you find this Mars. Mars retrograde is definitely one of great extremes. Someone who is pushing forward, very angry, very determined to push all obstacles out of the way and then all of a sudden serious doubts arise and you backtrack on all of your efforts so that there is a stalemate situation. Anger issues need to be sorted out. There needs to be a way to pace yourself so that you are slowly proceeding forward rather than rushing forward and then stopping and going back on yourself in so many areas of life. Mars has a lot to do with human sexuality as well. So sometimes Mars retrograde shows a fear of being open about your sexual needs or your sexual nature or some conflict in that regard. Mars, as the ruler of Scorpio, also represents everything secret and hidden in life. A Mars retrograde can actually make you hide many of your motivations in life. You need to come out of your shell a little bit and be less afraid to be who you truly are in life. Let's look at a few charts then to see this Mars retrograde in action. Let's start with Sigmund Freud, the famous founder of psychoanalysis and indeed of therapy itself. 
Freud has an amazing Mars retrograde, the only retrograde planet in the 12th house of his chart. The 12th house, as we know, is the house of the subconscious, but he was the man who actually brought the idea of the subconscious to light. He made it part of popular culture. No one had even considered the subconscious mind until Freud. So not surprising that he has his powerful Mars retrograde in Virgo in the 12th house. This is a house of dreams. He was also famous for the dream book, for actually bringing the analysis of dream into psychology or psychotherapy. Mars in Virgo is a highly analytical and critical nature turned inwards. He analyzed his own dreams for years and he analyzed himself as a subject, if you like, for his own research. A very introspective position of Mars retrograde indeed. Did he have anger issues? Did he turn them inwards? Strangely enough, he was the first person to suggest that anger turned inwards causes depression. And what are the houses ruled by Mars? Scorpio, the second house of early childhood and finances and the seventh house of relationship. His family life was deeply affected early on when his father lost a lot of money and the whole family was plunged into poverty, having to move far away, shown by this Mars in the 12th house of distant land. So he suffered a lot of poverty in his early years. Mars is the ruler of his seventh house of marriage. He married once and although they were fine for a certain amount of time and had many children, in time there was conflict between them shown by the sixth position from the seventh of Mars. And Freud talked about a great deal of difficulty connecting to his wife on a psychological level. So maybe he did indeed have a lot of anger turned inwards. But whether Freud had anger issues turned inwards or not, Jack Nicholson with a very strong Mars retrograde in own sign of Scorpio conjunct to Rahu as most certainly known for his anger factors. Jack Nicholson, the famous actor with enormous amount of credit for a really long history of successful films, also has Venus in Aries, another powerful Mars sign. So both of his retrograde planets are in Mars signs, giving this Mars energy. The sun exalted in Aries, giving him success. Many of the roles he played were of basically outsider type figures, in some way mavericks and also even psychopathic characters. In real life, however, Jack Nicholson is known for the violence of his temper sometimes, for sure. Don't forget, though, that Mars is amplified by this conjunction to Rahu. Nevertheless, he has at least three assault charges against him. One was for a road rage incident in which he basically battered down somebody's car with a golf club and two incidents of violence against women also. Looking at the fifth house placement, the house of children, Jack Nicholson has six children. Of course, once again, Rahu is amplifying this Mars retrograde situation, perhaps, because he has six children from five different females, only one of which was his wife. But he does talk of his strong involvement and real commitment to his children. Scorpio always gives this sort of passionate commitment. Mars also rules the tenth house of career, bringing to him character portrayals which were often of a very dangerous and almost subversive character, as I've said, and often having an element of horror attached to them. Mars, of course, in Scorpio, has everything to do with horror movies. When we consider Venus retrograde, first of all, let's understand the codical significance of Venus. Venus is codical for love, for marriage, for reproduction, having babies actually has a lot to do with how we get in touch with our sensual nature, also to do with artistic sense, money in our life, and in every way how we control our emotions. 
So when Venus is retrograde in a chart, we can know that some element of these factors has to be revisited again in this life. Very often there has been, they say, some sense of disloyalty past life. You have had some difficulties in relationships or which have caused an abrasion to your ability to connect to others emotionally. And this will be obvious in this lifetime. First thing that we will often see is an unusual sense of social connection. You can be a social animal, as it were, a party animal where your social life takes over your whole existence. Or you can even be celibate and even slightly reclusive. That can be seen. There is definitely something outside the norm in regard to both marriage and having children. There is also a real feel that you are on another plane, as it were, when it comes to connecting to others. Not only is there a fear factor just discussed, but there is a real feeling that ideal love, the purity of love, is tainted by earthly concerns. So you are always reaching for the sky but never quite finding it. So love romance is disappointing simply because of your tremendously high, almost unattainable ideals in this regard. In some way, love and emotion and expressing them to others are in some way blocked. In addition, artistic sense is also very unusual, avant-garde, not in connection with the norm of society, but also in some way artistic flow can be also blocked with this Venus. Since Venus has a lot to do with resources and material wealth, Venus retrograde can sometimes in some charts show a definite difficulty dealing with these practical factors in life. Exploring some Venus retrograde charts and starting with Amy Winehouse, the extraordinary singer, songwriter, attaining great fame at an early age, but who died also at age 27 of alcohol poisoning. Amy Winehouse's success and fame came from her extraordinary talents in both songwriting and, of course, her extraordinary unique voice. Rahu rising in Taurus, the, the actual sign of the voice itself, the natural second half sign. Rahu's dispositor, again, is this Venus retrograde. So Venus is actually all about singing. Venus is the karaka for singing in life and for the, the beauty of sound and music. But it is in an extraordinary, dangerous position in her chart. It is at Makarika containing her sole purpose. But it is also in a Gandanta position, moving from the water to the fire sign. And even more than that, as I've discussed on the video, it is actually in a state of almost stationary position. So that just before it is going to turn direct, this powerful Gandanta at Makarika and ruling planet Venus is in a chaotic, dangerous and totally unstable position and in which house, the third house of mental health. So it's no wonder that her mind was completely virtually on a cliff edge for most of her life. So this powerful but destabilized Venus retrograde in Cancer gave her the tremendous power of her voice. Don't forget, Mars as well is increasing the, the almost force and almost slightly masculine element. But the soulfulness is coming from Cancer, that deep felt emotion that you can hear in her voice. So Amy Winehouse got the fame and the acclaim, but she couldn't deal with it because Venus was in such a destabilized position. Note Venus's rulership. Houses ruled by this retrograde Venus are the first and the sixth house. Both have to do with health. So her health was severely compromised, mostly because of her own overindulgence in an extraordinary way in drugs and drink. And actually, Amy Winehouse had a lung disorder just before she died, although she didn't actually die of that disorder. And don't forget, the third house has to do with lungs and breathing issues. So she was already compromising her health by her own actions. As a female, Venus is not particularly corica for relationships. That is Jupiter. Jupiter in the 
seventh house in Scorpio with the dispositor Mars conjunct to the Venus. So her aggression, her instability affected her first marriage. She was actually violent towards her husband and him to her, was very turbulent and other relationships turned very violent and unstable as well for Amy Winehouse. So back to Jack Nicholson to look at the Venus because after all for men Venus is the corica for the wife. Venus retrograde at the top of the chart conjunct to the sun and Mercury in Aries ruler of the fourth and the eleventh house conjunct the sun ruler of the second house. I want to bring that in because it has so much to do with his early childhood and his mother situation which was quite extraordinary. He was actually brought up by his grandparents and his mother was unknown to him until later in life when he found that his sister was indeed his biological mother. Elder sister, of course, is ruled by the 11th house, also ruled by Venus. So Venus in this way, connecting mother and elder sister in an extraordinary way. In fact, Mercury is actually Karaka for sister also. But the combustion with the sun shows this secrecy and this really extraordinary situation of his whole identity in life. So Jack Nicholson's Venus here personifying his wife because Venus is always Karika for wife. He was married once but combusted a son. It was not successful in his case and the retrograde factor definitely comes to bear because he has had many liaisons with different women and six children actually with five different women but has never married again. So some element of the distrust and of the high ideals maybe of Venus retrograde combined with an extraordinary experience with his early childhood may be impacting here. Mercury retrograde. Mercury represents the rational mind, the intellect, the practical thought process. It also represents organization skills, communication skills, both written and verbal. It also has an effect on how we travel, how we move around in society. Mercury retrograde is definitely going to get you outside of the box in terms of communication. If it is strong by sign and has good aspects, Mercury can give you amazing intuition when retrograde. You find a new way of doing something, a unique way of doing something in your life according to Mercury's position that can actually get you a great deal of acclaim. Mercury retrograde is unique, a pioneer in some area of your life. This can be seen. But under affliction, there will be many issues that stop you communicating clearly. There can be speech problems, dyslexia. There can be a real issue with language and communicating with others. In fact, if you check the houses ruled by Gemini and Virgo in your chart, you will notice that there is a lack of practicality in those areas or at the very least there is something that is always going away there. There is a difficulty organizing and getting to grips with factors in those areas. It's like everything always has to be done again and again to sort things out. They're not sorted areas. They are areas of your life which need endless input to get work working on any normal level. But Mercury retrograde does have one special advantage in this age. In the age of social media, digital age, etc., Mercury retrograde, which is outside of the box and always looking at things from a different angle, can give extraordinary perception and success in all media areas. Once you've overcome some of the basic difficulties of a Mercury retrograde, if they do indeed exist for you, Mercury gives you extraordinary insight into all digital and technological processes. Back to Madonna again, looking at the Mercury retrograde this time. Saturn retrograde had some difficult karmas for her with her mother and her early childhood. And indeed, Mercury feeds into this. But placed in the first house in a dig bala situation, a powerful house for Mercury to be retrograde conjunct to the moon. It gives extraordinary strength of mind, extraordinary ability 
to see outside of the box and to put whatever she wants to do to the public, Moon is public, in a way that gets her absolutely noticed, Leo, and extraordinary fame and success. So her great versatility and success as a songwriter, performer, producer, everything is shown by this Moon-Mercury combination. By the way, Moon also represents Mother. So once again, she is identifying actually strongly with her mother who was also called Madonna and of course Mercury is the second lord so in some way shows that troubled childhood again and the 11th house lord the 11th house shows how we project ourselves onto our society in a political way Madonna is extraordinarily involved in political factors as well but it has actually caused her some difficulty due to this mercury retrograde and steve jobs who completely personifies the meaning of mercury retrograde seeing outside of the box the inventiveness the ingenuity co-founder of apple and of course complete pioneer in the age of personal computing the sixth house is about how we work with others as well. And with this retrograde Mercury, apart from being completely inventive, unique and having a special way of creating because the sixth house is always about mechanical creativity, he was extraordinarily difficult and cranky to work with, which is very typical of a afflicted planet in the sixth house. But what houses are lauded? The second house of early family and the 11th house. So we should note that his early family life, he was adopted as a child and was somewhat of a loner. In fact, as the 11th house is also containing a retrograde Jupiter and is lauded by Mercury, we should know that he had extraordinary difficulty making friendships in his early life. Mercury retrograde sixth house, of course, is going to have an impact on health at some point. Actually, he was diagnosed with cancer, pancreatic cancer, in 2003. But the sort of pancreatic cancer that was easily treatable and actually curable with conventional medicines at the time, so it was said. But he refused to go along with those. Rather, he used alternative methods, which actually did not help him. And he died of a related disorder to this cancer in 2011. Somebody said that it was a sort of suicide, not accepting conventional medicine. But this is Mercury retrograde. Mercury must go his own way, which is contrary to the accepted norm. Up on your screen now, Karma's in all signs. Don't forget to check out that playlist coming up fairly soon. Will be Mercury and Venus there, so you can check the Karma's of those natal placements. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below as well. Goodbye for now, and God bless you all.